I hear five things to know to get your day started. A man charged with the near fatal overdose of his young daughter is expected to learn what his sentence will be today. Zachary Borg out of Corinna will be in Penobscot County Court this afternoon. His 11 month old daughter was taken to the hospital last year after she was found in cardiac arrest. Investigators later found traces of fentanyl on her baby bottle and on her teddy bear. Borg waived his right to a jury trial, so a judge will deliver that verdict in a Bangor courtroom at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Maine State Police have just made an arrest in a 26 year old cold case thanks to new DNA technology. Police say a woman was sexually assaulted in August of 1996, but the DNA investigators found didn't match anyone in their system at that time. Yesterday, police arrested Jason Follett from Gouldsboro. They say they found him by getting that DNA sample tested in a private lab. Follett is now facing sexual assault charges. The race for Maine's 2nd Congressional District will come down to ranked choice voting. Results are expected to come out next week. Incumbent Democrat Jared Golden and his Republican opponent Bruce Poliquin both failed to reach the 50% threshold that is needed to declare victory. That means the second choices of everybody who voted for third place independent candidate Tiffany Bond will now be redistributed. Right now, Golden is in the lead with 49%. Poliquin's got 44. Tiffany Bond's at 7 Officials are planning to redistribute those second choice votes. That will be on Tuesday. Results are expected by the end of that day. When it comes to voter turnout, Maine Secretary of State says it was extremely high for a midterm election. 211,000 Mainers requested ballots to vote absentee. That number is about 15,000 more than in 2018. In that election, about 65% of eligible voters cast ballots. Secretary Bellows says she expects that number will be closer to 70% this year. As for exact numbers, they won't be released until the official results of the election are complete. And a railroad company is going to have to pay thousands of dollars to five towns in Maine for putting out fires near train tracks. The fires happened in Lakeview and Brownville back in May. Crews from multiple nearby towns had to come help. Eastern Maine Railway was charged with failing to maintain fire prevention devices on trains. The company will now have to pay nearly $10,000. That will be split among the five towns. You can read more about this in this morning's Bangor Daily News. Let's get a final check of the weather from Jason. And it's a busy one. Uh, look at the temperatures, though. Forget about the rain for a second. We're going 60s for highs down to 40s and then lows in the 20s. But there will have shower activity on and off. Big rainstorm tomorrow night into Saturday. And then for the coast, you've seen that rain here with 70 Saturday. And then you can say goodbye to 70 for a while as we clear out Monday into Tuesday. All right. All right. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a forecast that leaves you a little flat, but you know, it <laughs> could be worse, could be better. Thanks, Jason.